$1.9 billion in new contracts, a seven-year freeze behind them, and 98 floors still to build. Jeddah Tower, the world's first kilometre-tall building attempting resurrection from what looked like the most expensive concrete stump in history. Current status, 69 to 70 floors up, 98 floors to go, August 2028 deadline. The question is, can they actually finish what Dubai's Burj Khalifa proved possible? Let's find out. Construction crews are working at a pace that would make most builders nervous. One floor every three to four days, with 98 floors remaining. That's roughly 300 days of perfect execution with zero room for delays, engineering surprises, all the kind of setbacks that killed this project once already. The August 2028 target is more than ambitious. It's borderline reckless when you're building something that's never been attempted at this scale. The $1.9 billion new contract with Saudi Bin Laden Group runs on a 42-month timeline, which sounds reasonable until you realize they're racing against physics itself. Vision 2030 political backing is driving this schedule. Saudi Arabia needs this tower completed as the crown jewel of their economic diversification plan. But political deadlines and construction physics don't always align. The higher you build, the harder every system becomes. And Jeddah Tower is climbing into uncharted territory. Compare this to Burj Khalifa's development. Dubai had six years from groundbreaking to completion, with established foundation technology and proven concrete pumping systems. Jeddah Tower is attempting to go 200 meters higher in roughly the same time frame, starting from a seven-year construction freeze that exposed the partially built core to desert conditions. The stakes couldn't be higher. Success means global prestige and proof that Saudi Arabia can execute mega-projects at the highest level. Failure means the world's most expensive abandoned tower, a skeletal reminder of ambition that couldn't match execution. Recent construction photos show steady progress, but the real test comes as they climb higher. Every floor above the 100 mark brings new challenges that no building has faced before. Wind loads increase exponentially. Concrete pumping becomes more complex. Elevator systems push beyond current technology limits. The construction team is betting they can maintain this pace as engineering complexity multiplies. One floor every three to four days worked when they were building the lower levels. But pumping concrete 400 meters into the sky is different from pumping it 700 meters up. Installing elevator systems at 600 meters requires different solutions than systems at 300 meters. Then there's the human factor. Construction crews working at these heights face conditions no workers have experienced before. Safety systems, material transport, and basic logistics all become exponentially more complex as the tower climbs toward the kilometer mark. The 42-month timeline assumes perfect weather, no supply chain disruptions, and flawless execution of engineering systems that exist mostly in theory. Saudi Arabia's Vision 2030 depends on projects like this, proving the kingdom can deliver on impossible promises. But momentum is building. New contracts are signed. International engineering firms are committed. The concrete core is climbing steadily, and the foundation has proven it can handle the loads. The question isn't whether the engineering works, it's whether they can execute it fast enough to meet a deadline that leaves no margin for error. August 2028 is 1,200 days away. With 98 floors remaining, that's roughly 12 days per floor if everything goes perfectly. But perfection rarely happens when you're building something that's never been built before, especially when you're doing it faster than anyone thought possible. The race against time has begun, and the clock is ticking on the most ambitious construction project in human history. The foundation battle was just the beginning. Engineers drove 270 board piles as deep as 110 meters into Red Sea clay, fighting through degraded coral reef formations that shift with tidal movements. That's more than twice the depth of Burj Khalifa's foundation piles, and they had to do it in soil conditions that would make most engineers nervous. But foundations were the easy part. 
Now comes the real nightmare, pumping concrete higher than any building in history. Burj Khalifa set the world record at 606 meters for concrete pumping. Jeddah Tower needs to shatter that record by nearly 400 meters, reaching concrete to heights where the physics of pumping become exponentially more complex. The pressure required to push concrete that high approaches the limits of current pump technology. Then there's the concrete itself. Standard mixes won't survive at these heights with Red Sea conditions. Engineers develop specialized, low permeability concrete, designed to resist saline groundwater while maintaining strength at extreme heights. Every batch has to be chilled before pumping to prevent it from setting during the journey up the tower. The three-pedal design isn't just for show, it's a desperate attempt to manage wind forces that no building has ever faced. At 600 meters, wind loads are manageable. At 800 meters, they become serious. At 1,000 meters, they become potentially catastrophic. The tower's three wings buttress a central hexagonal core, creating a shape designed to disrupt wind vortices before they can build destructive resonance. But wind engineering at this scale is still largely theoretical. Computer models can predict behavior, but no building has actually tested these forces in real-world conditions. Then you hit the limits of vertical transport. Traditional steel elevator ropes become too heavy long before you reach a kilometer. The weight of the cables themselves would snap under their own load, making conventional elevator systems impossible. Jeddah Tower's solution pushes into uncharted territory. Carbon fiber elevator cables that replace steel ropes entirely. These ultralight cables can handle elevator runs of 600 to 1,000 meters while cutting energy consumption dramatically. But they've never been tested at this scale in a real building. The elevator system itself becomes a nightmare of logistics. Multiple elevator zones, sky lobbies and transfer floors have to work together seamlessly. Passengers can't wait 10 minutes for an elevator ride when you're moving people between 168 floors. The building needs 59 elevators working in perfect coordination, including five double-deck systems that have never operated at these heights. Saudi Bin Laden Group is executing the construction while Thornton Tomasetti engineers the structure but they're building something that exists mostly in computer simulations. Every system, from fire safety to building pressurization, has to work at altitudes where commercial aircraft fly. At 800 meters, air pressure drops significantly. Building systems designed for ground level don't function the same way when you're approaching the altitude of commercial flight paths. HVAC systems, fire suppression, and even basic plumbing face challenges that no building has solved before. The higher they climb, the harder every system becomes. Material transport that worked at 300 meters becomes exponentially more complex at 600 meters. Construction cranes operating at these heights face wind conditions that can shut down work for days at a time. Worker safety reaches unprecedented complexity. Emergency evacuation from the 150th floor isn't the same as evacuating from the 50th floor. Fire safety systems have to work in conditions where traditional firefighting equipment simply can't reach. Then there's the simple physics of building at this scale. The tower's own weight approaches a million tons, all concentrated on that 270-pile foundation system. As the structure climbs higher, every additional floor adds exponential stress to the entire system below. Concrete pumping, wind engineering, elevator technology, worker safety, and structural loads. Each system pushes beyond proven limits. The engineering exists on paper and in computer models, but reality has a way of revealing problems that simulations miss. The nightmare isn't that any single system will fail. The nightmare is that they're all operating at the edge of possibility simultaneously. When you're building something that's never been built before, every system becomes a potential failure point. And they're attempting to solve all these problems while maintaining a pace of one floor every three to four days. The engineering challenges don't pause for construction schedules. But Saudi Arabia's Vision 2030 timeline doesn't pause for engineering reality either.
The engineering is solved on paper, but executing it in three years while climbing into uncharted territory remains the ultimate test. Subscribe for updates as this kilometer-tall gamble unfolds, and we'll see you next time.